Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland and here I am out the ha outside the house of E.V. Knox in Hampstead, London. So um, what does the V stand for? Valpy. He's um, Edward Valpy Knox. Valpy is the only other person I've known to have that name, Valpy. I wonder if it's in the surname. And actually he had another middle name, George, which just went by E.V. Knox, not E.G.V. Knox. Anyway, um, he was a witty poet and an editor of Punch magazine, prolific journalist over decades. So he was born in Birmingham in 1881 into a well-to-do family of Anglican clergy. He's descended from a peer of the realm, the Viscount of Arbuthnot. Arbuthnot is, is, is a town in Scotland. Um, anyway, his father actually rose to be Bishop of Birmingham in time. So uh, he came from a distinguished family. Um, one of his um, brothers was a crypt cryptanalyst in the First World War, I think the Second World War. Another was Ronald Knox, um, the famous um, uh, co convert from the Anglican clergy to the Catholic clergy, an outstanding stylist uh, in his writing. Um, but back to this um, uh, E.B. Knox. So uh, he went to King Edward School, Birmingham, as in probably the most distinguished school in the city. Um, Enoch Pearl went there rather later than him. Enoch Pearl's 21 years younger than him. No, sorry, 31 years younger than him. Um, so which King Edward founded it? There have been eight in this country. Is Edward VI founded it? Because after the dissolution of the monasteries, there was a lack of educational provision, which the boy king recognised. So this latter-day Josiah founded loads of schools, including Shrewsbury, Recton, and so on. If you ever hear of a, a, a king's school, that's usually Edward VI. Or a King Edward's school, again, that's usually Edward VI. So then he went on to rugby school. Rugby's not very far from Birmingham. His, his um, more famous brother, Ronald, went to Eton. And E.V. Knox didn't go to university. I'm not quite sure why, because he was certainly a scholarly sort and uh, uh, was imbued with a love of words, was a distinguished classicist in his school days. Um, and he often wrote um, poems in English in one, one of those sort of Latin or Greek formats like iambic pentameter, didactic pentameter, and things like that. So um, when the First World War came along, he volunteered for the Lincolnshire Regiment. He was an officer. I don't recall which rank he, he rose to. I don't think he had any prior connection to Lincolnshire, anyhow. So he served um, with gallantry on the, on the Western Front. And I think he avoided ever being wounded. So he was started contributing to Punch magazine. And Punch magazine started in, I think, the 1840s and was going into the late 20th century, since went bust. And um, it was um, a satirical poem about uh, well, public affairs, not just politics, but any, anything that was going on. So there'd be, there'd be short and, and witty pieces. So he had a reputation of something of a wag. And um, he liked to write um, in the style of well-known poets of the day, like um, uh, John Macefield or Robert Bridges, who was Poet Laureate at that time. He'd been a school contemporary of his brother Ronald um, uh, at Eton. And then um, he later rose to be editor of Punch magazine. Um, and so he lived here the latter part of his life. He died in 1971. I'm not sure where he's buried, but uh, you can buy um, collections of his sparkling uh, commentary. This, this wasn't really reportage. These were opinion pieces mostly. Um, so here we are in, in Hampstead, this delightful garden suburb where Hampstead liberals are meant to live. Uh, so intellectuals of liberal left-wing views, um, which is broadly him, although he wasn't partisan in politics. That's enough about E.V. Knox. Toodaloo.